Hi, and welcome to What The Heck, where today we'll be answering the question, what the heck is an item filter? Well, I'll tell you. So, as is the case with a lot of redstone mechanisms, it's useful to first visualize it as a black box. This particular black box has one input, as you can see there on the left, and it has two outputs, one up top there and one on the right. So this item filter is set up to filter out diamonds. So you can put anything in the input and it will go all the way through the black box and only the diamonds will end up at the top output and then everything else will end up on the right output. So let's go ahead and try it out. All right, so as you can see, I filled up some of my hot bar with a bunch of precious materials, including diamonds here. And before we put them in the chest, let's go ahead and verify that both of the output chests are empty. So you can see that this one is the one that everything is gonna go into, and this one is the one that the diamonds will go into. So you can see that they're all empty right now. So let's go ahead and dump all of the contents of our hot bar into this chest here, and you'll see them start to filter through. Here come the emeralds into this chest here, and you'll see the copper go into this chest as well. Uh, we should also see, I think the diamonds, yes, they've already made it over to here. And you'll see that all the rest of them will end up in this output chest. I do believe that the iron is the last thing to go through. And there we go. So you can see that the diamond made it to this chest, but everything else made it to this chest instead. So how on earth did that actually work? Well, let's peel back the curtain and see what's underneath. All right, so there we go. And as you can see, this is a really small little contraption here, but this is what's responsible for actually doing the filtering. And I'm gonna go ahead and explain that right now. So starting from the top layer, you can see that this line of hoppers is going over this hopper that's being read by this comparator. So this is just your standard line of hoppers, nothing weird or interesting going on with any of these. But what is interesting is this hopper down here. If we take a look inside, you can see that it is filled with some named items and some diamonds. So this one right here, it, it doesn't have to be a named item. It can really just be any item that you're sure won't be coming through the system. But here you can probably get an insight into how this item filter works. So let's assume that any old item is making its way along this hopper line over here. And as it passes over this hopper, this hopper will actually attempt to take an item from this hopper. But unfortunately, unless it's a diamond or one of these named iron nuggets, it's not actually going to be able to take it. So if it doesn't match any of these items here, then it will just keep moving along. But if a diamond is making its way along this hopper line and then passes over top of this hopper, then this hopper actually can take it. And so it will, and then this will turn into 19. But then it also needs to then take that item and then drop it into this hopper and then pass it along into this chest. And that's exactly what this comparator is responsible for. So you might be wondering why 18? That's an oddly specific number of diamonds in there, isn't it? And yeah, it is a very specific number of diamonds because if you add one more to it, something very special happens. And there you go. You can see that for a split second, it was 19 and then it reduced back down to 18. So how did that happen? If we move our attention to this small model on the floor over here, you can see that this hopper is outfitted with 18 diamonds and four named items. And as you can see, it is outputting a signal strength of one. Now, as it turns out, this number of items right here is the maximum number of items to still give you a signal strength of one. So if I were to go into here, and if you keep an eye on the bottom part of my screen over here, this corner, and I were to add one more item to this right here, and increase that to 19, you can see that now this has a signal strength of one and this has a signal strength of two. And that is exactly the difference that we're looking for. So back to the full design, let's figure out what happens when this redstone over here becomes a signal strength of two. Well, what happens is that the redstone signal will reach this block over here, which will power this block. This powered block will then pass its power onto this repeater here. This repeater powers this block and that has a torch on it, and this torch will turn off, and it will unlock this hopper right here. 
So you can see here that in its default state, the only reason that this hopper isn't being drained by this hopper right here is that this hopper is being powered, so it's being completely disabled. And that's why it's able to hold 18 items plus the filter items. And if you take a look inside this hopper here, there is one more sacrificial item that just kind of sits here. And that's an unfortunate consequence of this design right here. You'll always have this item. So back to the flow of things, when a diamond makes its way along this line of hoppers and then gets sucked into this hopper right here, then this comparator will output a signal strength of two, which will then power this piece of redstone, power this redstone repeater, and then power this torch, or I guess turn it off, and then that will depower this hopper. And then since this hopper is depowered, it will then suck the item out from this hopper here. But the instant that happens, this comparator will then read a signal strength of one because now it's been reduced by one, right? And then this will be depowered, this will be depowered, and then this will power again, which will relock this hopper. And it just so happens that this one, two, three ticks of delay is just enough time for only one item to be passed through. So if we go back up to this input chest and then put a diamond into it, then if I'm quick enough and I can look at the sorter, just as it goes through, then we can actually see it get filtered. So I'm going to now close this chest and then take a look at this. And you can see that it fired just for that one little bit. And you can see that this torch blinked off just for a bit. And now this chest has six items in it. Now, of course, this also works with a continuous stream of items as well. The difference here is that the torch does not blink. It just kind of stays off for the perfect amount of time. Now, everything else will blink, but the torch stays off. So we're going to go ahead and watch that right now. So hopefully there you saw that the redstone and the repeater were blinking but the torch itself stayed off for just the perfect amount of time. And if we look back at this filter hopper, you can see that there's still perfectly 18 items still in there. Now, a real quick note on 18 items. So 18 items is actually quite a bit for a filter, especially if it's something as expensive as diamonds, for instance. And you may have noticed that the only reason that we put 18 in here is to get the maximum number of items in here for a signal strength of one. So you'd think that maybe you can actually use a single diamond in here and instead buff the number of filter items. And the truth is you actually can. So there we go. Now we're only using one diamond. So now you can see that it's still outputting a signal strength of one here. And then if I put another diamond into there, then it increases to a signal strength of two. And it turns out we can do the exact same thing with the filter as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this with one, just like that. And if we take a look into here, let's just take these 11 diamonds and feed them back into the input here. And you can see that it is still working perfectly. And as soon as this torch turns back on, you can see that there is still one diamond here, one diamond here, and our 11 diamonds have made it all into this chest right here. Oh, and also something else that you might have noticed is that this hopper is not pointed down. Instead, it is pointing to the side. Now, this is actually very, very important. Now, this whole item filter works because this hopper is able to retain its items, but it wouldn't be able to if it was pointed down. In fact, it would just drain all of its contents into this hopper. Remember, by default, this hopper is the one that's being locked, not this one. So this is very, very important. If you're making an item sorter of your own, then make sure that your filter hoppers are not pointed down. Make sure that they are pointed sideways. This is a common thing that a lot of people mess up, actually. So this right here is basically the most simple item filter in the whole game. Uh, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. But there are many, many more item filters out there. And we're going to get into some of them right now. So here we have a slight variation of that design over there. You can see that a very obvious difference between the two is that the length of the redstone line is three instead of two over there. And there's a very specific reason for that. Now this design was created by Impulse SV, although honestly it's simple enough to have been devised by probably other people too, but he's the one that made the famous tutorial on it. And so the reason why this one is so popular and so different actually from that one over there is because it is overflow proof. 
So usually when you see these item filters out in the wild, you don't see them on their own lonesome like this. Usually you see them stacked right next to each other and touching. And normally this isn't a problem unless your filter gets backed up. So what can happen over time is your chest gets completely filled up, which will then back up the hopper behind it, which will then back up your filter, and then you have an issue. So let's see what happens with that first design when the filter hopper gets filled up. So here we have a filter hopper with no items in it. And right now we have uh, 18. So it's got a signal strength of one. And so you start filling it up, filling it up. It gets to signal strength of two. And then when it gets completely backed up, you have now 64 items in here and it's totally backed up. And here we have a signal strength of three. And if this happens with that design over there, it's actually a pretty big problem. Well, not when it's on its own, but when it's next to a couple of other modules, you can see that it will actually bleed into the other modules next to it and then start draining those filters, which is very bad. But over here, because the filtering only triggers with a signal strength of three, and it won't ever go over a signal strength of three, this one is tileable and safe from overflow. But of course, there is a downside to everything. Now, because the default state requires a signal strength of two, in fact, the maximum number of items for a signal strength of two, it means that you need 41, or actually, if you count this one down here, you need 42 filter items to sacrifice in order to get your filter working, which, especially if you're filtering something expensive like diamonds, then yeah, it gets quite expensive quite quickly. And here you might be thinking, well, why not make this one 41 and this one one? Well, in that case, you actually give up the overflow protected nature of it. These need to be one or else I'm going to go ahead and show you over here. So over here, I've made it so that this is 41 and this is one. And if we go ahead and clog up the system here, you can see that it is now outputting a signal strength of five, and that will absolutely bleed into the other modules, which is not good. So unfortunately, to benefit from the overflow protection of this design, you do need to use quite a bit of your own items in order to get this thing set up. But I think it's worth it, especially if you're running automatic farms and things like that. So these are the basic design for stackable items, but we can also build a filter that separates stackable items from non-stackable items over here. So as it turns out, non-stackable items like a wooden shovel actually count as a full stack of items, and so it actually kicks out a pretty high signal strength, a signal strength of three when it's the only thing in a hopper. So we can actually take advantage of that with this design over here. So you can see that if a stackable item goes through this hopper chain and gets picked up by this comparator here, it'll only light up this redstone dust and kind of do nothing, as you can see right there. But if a non-stackable item goes through, then both of these redstones will light up, which will turn off this torch, turn off this piece of dust, which will depower this repeater here, which will depower this block and then unlock this hopper. So you can see that this chest is empty right now, but if I were to then drop my sword into there, you can see it actually fire and our sword gets filtered right down into this chest here and the redstone, or actually I guess the blue wool, my bad, I forgot, but the blue wool that we tossed in before actually gets sent over here. And I guess I also at some point toss a torch in there. But let's go ahead and throw another piece of redstone dust into there. And you can see it passes right by. So these are what most people think of when they say item filter, but there are all kinds of other item filters out there for more specialized purposes, and they get really interesting. So here we have a filter designed by Metamilo, and this one actually separates shulker boxes from everything else and it uses the fact that you can't actually put a shulker box within a shulker box in order to basically separate them from everything else. So if I go ahead and place a shulker box and say a wooden shovel, nine diamonds, another shulker box and a torch and like four, five named items <laughs> into there, you can see that we have a uh, chest over here you can see that the shulker box has already made its way down here. The second shulker box has made its way over here. And then everything else has made its way into this chest over here. So it is essentially separated out 
the shulker boxes from everything else. And here we have another different design. I like to call these full chest item sorters. Now the reason is because each chest over here needs to be completely full of items, or at least every slot in every chest needs to be completely full with items. So the way that you would configure this kind of sorter is that in any of these chests, in any of these slots that you want, you would put whatever item you want. So let's just say I want this top chest to filter redstone dust and blue wool. The glass is all just placeholders. And the way that this one works is as the items sort of cascade down over here, you can see that each of these hoppers is pointed into the chest and the machine gives it enough time to try to put the item in the chest. And if it fails, then it moves on to the next hopper down the line. But if it succeeds, of course, it's able to put it into the chest there. And so let's go ahead and go to the input. Now this one's kind of slow, so you need to feed it in sort of at a slow pace. But here you go, and the comparator, and then a hopper for good measure. This is one that isn't being filtered, and you'll see that one go through the whole system instead. So as you can see, now we have two redstone dust, two blue wool, two repeaters, two comparators, two torches, and the hopper actually made its way all the way to the back here. And there are all kinds of other way wackier designs that I'm gonna speed through right now. So here are a couple of more sophisticated multi-item sorter designs by Maizuma Games and Rapscallion, which uses a single chest in each module in order to encode a whole array of items to sort into each module. It's really cool stuff. And here's a sorter by Il Mango, which separates armor from every other item. And here's a sorter by Raiseworks, which actually separates each armor piece from each other. Here's a potion sorter by Il Mango. And here's a different potion sorter by Ashlaja, or Ashlaha, I don't know how to say that name, sorry. And there's a bunch of others that exist out there too that I won't get into in this video, but I highly encourage you to explore around. I'll leave a bunch of links in the description if you want to check some out. Bottom line is that the world of item sorters is extremely wide and diverse, and there's a lot of really smart people making really cool innovations in the space. So if item organization and storage automation sounds like your jam, that's awesome. There's a lot to play with. Or if you're like me and just like to noodle around, then it is worth it to at least know a few of the basics. And there you have it, a short introduction into what the heck item filters are. Hope you learned something, and if you did, I'd appreciate if you left a like and subscribe for more redstone guides like this. Alright, that's it. Bye.